Serial killer Thomas Creech lives another day. The state was supposed to execute the 73-year-old at 10 a.m., but medical staff wasn't able to get an IV in him. This would be the first unsuccessful execution in Idaho history. Creech is convicted of five murders in three states, including three here in Idaho. Abby Davis has been following this story today and joins us with reaction from multiple, multiple people impacted by this. Right, and that includes the granddaughter of one of Creech's victims. She shared a bit of her family story and what they hope happens next. I never actually got to meet my grandpa. Edward Arnold was 34 when Thomas Creech shot him and another man, John Bradford, to death. Their bodies were found in a ditch near Donnelly. And my mom went through a whole life of, you know, disappointments and people letting her down. And she said that her dad was the only one that she remembers ever telling her that he loved her. And that was taken from her. While serving his sentence for the murders of Arnold and Bradford, Creech killed a fellow inmate in 1981. He beat 23-year-old David death, Dale Jensen to death with a sock full of batteries. This is a copy of the original death warrant signed by Robert Newhouse. Former Ada County prosecutor Jim Harris fought for Creech to be sentenced to death. And he was very, very dangerous, and he, he, he still is, as far as I know. Now, after serving more than 40 years on death row for Jensen's murder, an unsuccessful execution attempt Wednesday. A reaction to what happened this morning? Bizarre. Uh, that's about all I can say. I, I have practiced law for 40 years, although I'm retired now, and I have never heard of something like this occurring. Tanya Wyrick called the failed execution devastating. It just, just keeps dragging out. And it's just hard for the family. Meanwhile, Donna and Roger Bow had Creech's family in mind. I was worried about Leanne, his wife. The couple met him more than a decade ago through Donna's church and her work as a state representative. When is this punishment going to end? I hope that his life will be able to be continued. It's a value to many people. It was a value to the other prisoners. It was a value to even to the guards who took care of him over all these years. Do you hope the prosecution, the state, um, tries to get another death warrant for Tom? That's something that I'm, I'm juggling with back and forth. We've come to the terms that we really don't care what happens to him on this earth because, you know, he's going to have to face his consequences with God. This thing could drag on uh, longer than, uh, than he does. Let's put it that way. Harris thinks Creech should live out the rest of his life on death row. He just doesn't want Creech's sentence lowered to life in prison. He'd rather the state execute Creech than allow him to rejoin the general population and put other inmates at risk. Morgan and Brian. Abby, thank you for getting those voices. It really is impactful remembering the victims as we go through this execution process with Mr. Creech. Absolutely. Five that we know about or that he's been convicted mm -hmm. of and countless others that he claims to have had. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so now to the question on everybody's mind. What happens now? Well, Creech's death warrant expires at 11.59 tonight. The state says they're currently considering their next steps. Shortly after the failed execution, Creech's legal team filed a motion to stay his execution again. Yeah, in a statement, they said in part, quote, we are angered but not surprised that the state of Idaho botched the execution of Thomas Creech today. This is what happens when unknown individuals with unknown training are assigned to carry out an execution. They went on to say, this is precisely the kind of mishap we warn the state and the courts could happen when attempting to execute one of the country's oldest death row inmates in circumstances completely shielded in secrecy, despite a well-known history of getting drugs from shady sources. You can read their entire statement on our website, ktvb.com. Okay, so Creech's legal team called the execution botched. However, right. during the news conference this afternoon, IDOC pushed back on that term, botched, instead calling it unsuccessful. This isn't a do-it-at-any-cost process, that our first objective is to carry this out with dignity, professionalism, and respect. When it reaches a point in that process, at any step, where it looks like we're going to be unable to do that, that's when we call it off. It wasn't a difficult decision. It was the right decision. Governor Brad Little issued a statement about the execution. He said, in part, the team of professionals at IDOC was prepared for the possibility that medical professionals would not be able to access the inmates' veins, a circumstance that has occurred in execution procedures elsewhere in the country. The competent and qualified medical professionals 
present and IDOC officials were cautious and did the right thing in not moving forward with this execution. Idaho's Attorney General Raul Labrador also issued a statement about the failed execution. He said in part, quote, justice has now been delayed again following the medical inability to execute Thomas Creech. Today is a sad day for the families of his victims and a continuation of the pain they have endured for almost five decades. Meanwhile, the ACLU released a statement as well. It says in part, quote, the failed execution of Thomas Creech calls attention to additional reasons why the government should not be in the business of executing people. I was in the media center while our Brenda Rodriguez was in the maximum security prison for that execution this morning. After submitting her name online with IDOC, Brenda was one of the reporters chosen as a witness in a lottery system. Here's a little of what she had to say after today's failed execution. Brenda, what was his demeanor like the second he walked in the door into that execution chamber? From what I can tell, he was nervous. He was uneasy of what was going on. But one of the biggest things, though, the entire time he was, his eyes and, and his position was, was uh, just glued to his family, which was just right in front of him. Mm -hmm. um, we were a little bit towards the left-hand side of him, um, towards the bottom, um, and his family or uh, his family was in the other room. So we didn't really get to see the family. Um, we just got to see his interaction more so, just uh, mumbling words to them. Two phrases that I was able to catch was, um, I'm, I'm sorry, um, this happened before the first IV was administered, and then um, I love you. And that was after several attempts. Medical staff physically examined Creech this morning. They determined there were eight potential IV access points on his right. body, so on his arms, uh, on his hands, on his legs, on his feet. And uh, under policy, right before Creech went into the chamber, medical staff prepared trays with three syringes of lethal injection drug pentobarbital. T. Walt confirmed two of the three prepared doses are no longer usable for the future. Right. So one dose is, but he's confident they will be able to get the necessary chemicals for future lethal injection executions. Those have been difficult to come by in the yes. past, which is why we've had a couple of executions uh, with Pizzuto. Gerald Pizzuto exactly. has been suspended or pushed back a couple of times. Exactly. The state got these, they secured these, and T. Walt confirming today that he is confident that should they issue another death warrant and decide to go this route, if possible, he is confident that they would be able to secure those drugs again. Okay, so speaking of what happened today, a lot of people are calling into question the medical staff that was on hand right. for this. There were three medical team members in that chamber trying to put the IV in. What do we know about them? Yeah, no, these people have to stay anonymous, so we won't ever know who they are. Okay. Um, they were dressed head to toe, as Brenda and the other media witnesses report. They were dressed head to toe in scrubs. Their faces were completely covered mm -hmm. in white cloth, and then they had safety goggles on. But what we do know about these individuals, and this is actually readily available on IDOC's website, under their standard operating protocol is they do have a list of qualifications and they're volunteers hmm. and in their day jobs their training is as healthcare professionals these are people that have experience administering IVs and so again like I said their qualifications are listed online if people want to take a look for themselves. Do I understand that they were part of a previous execution team as well? I asked that question of T. Walt and he said that um, he didn't give the number of the staff members that were there. There were okay. three in the room, but he said at least one of them was involved in a previous execution in the state of Idaho, and they go through extensive training on IV catheters. Gotcha. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Morgan.